Hello everyone. Today's case takes us all the way back to 1969 with a mysterious unsolved disappearance of a six-year-old boy. And the six-year-old boy actually went missing in a national park and it would turn out to be the biggest national park search of all time. At least 1,180 people have been reported missing from U.S. national parks from 2018 to the first two months of 2023, according to records. So imagine how many people have gone missing from national parks in the last 50 years. Well, there's been so many people that have gone missing in national parks and national forests that has become a phenomenon. So strange, in fact, that there is a series called Missing 411, which was started in an attempt to link unsolved disappearances. Because there seems to be some eerily similar characteristics of people who go missing in national parks in the United States of America. It's an unknown what happened to these people. It extends far beyond just kids. Hundreds of people vanished from our national parks and forests under very unusual but very similar circumstances. In a lot of these cases, search and rescue or the volunteers searching people have already gone over certain areas, not once, not twice, but even dozens of times. And then the child is found there maybe a year, maybe a few years later. And national park disappearances are ones that creep me out more than others, I'm gonna be honest. What is out there in the woods? I don't know about you, but my TikTok page is full of Appalachian Mountain horror stories. They always pop up on my For You page at two in the morning when I'm about to go to bed, and they give me the creeps. So cases like these really get me interested. Why do so many people go missing in these forests and are never found? But today we're going to be talking about little Dennis's case. If there are any other cases of people going missing in national parks and national forests that you wanna talk about, let me know and I will look into them. Today's case takes place in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, a sprawling landscape of lush forests, mountains, streams, rivers, and waterfalls that straddles the border of North Carolina and Tennessee. It also includes a segment of the Appalachian Trail. It's an absolutely beautiful landscape and a place that William Martin thought would be a fun place to take his two sons to experience. On June 13th of 1969, William packed up the car with his father Clyde and his two sons, Douglas, who I couldn't find an age for, and six-year-old Dennis. And the four would end up heading off for a hiking and camping trip through the Great Smoky Mountains for Father's Day. This hike was actually a family tradition and there had never been any incidents. It was something that they had done many times before and the first night went without incident. The family hiked from Cascade Cove to Russell's Field and camped overnight there. On day two, the Martins ended up meeting up with some family friends, and I read that they had two sons as well that would end up playing with the two Martin boys. The group ended up going to an area called Spence Field, which was a meadow on the western part of the mountains with a great view. However, I think it is important to note that this field was near the Appalachian Trail. Now, little Dennis was born on June 20th of 1962 in Knoxville, Tennessee. The family was from Knoxville, but honestly, I didn't see much about little Dennis, which makes me sad. He looked like such a cute little kid, and I wish we knew more about him. If you know anything else about him, let me know down below. But that day, the family was out. They were relaxing. They were looking at this amazing view around them, and the children ended up deciding they wanted to play some hide and seek. Now, I've also seen that the kids were trying to scare the adults. But as far as I seen from official reports, they were playing hide and seek. And Dennis, along with his brother and the other two children, ended up going into the forest to play. William last said he remembered seeing his son Dennis going behind a bush to hide. Now around five minutes later, the other children had all returned to the campsite. However, around 4.30 p.m., little Dennis was nowhere to be found. Now immediately, William got concerned and he ended up running down this trail for miles and miles until he had went so far, he was sure that he would have caught up to Dennis if he had went down this trail. But he did not find Dennis on the trail. He didn't see anything that could connect to Dennis. Dennis was nowhere to be found. It turns out Dennis was also wearing a red shirt that day, which among the trees, you think he would be sticking out like a sore thumb if he was you know, anywhere nearby, there were no signs of Dennis at all. Now this was really concerning because the area around where they were camping had steep slopes, it had ravines, you know, it was the forest. There were also a lot of wild animals in this area, including copperhead snakes, bears, feral hogs, bobcats, all which could make a snack out of a little boy. To make matters even worse, just shortly after Dennis disappeared, it began to downpour, dropping three inches of rain, washing out the trails, causing flooding. It just contaminated and ruined any sort of crime scene or any sort of evidence that they may be able to have found. It was just all destroyed, which is just incredibly, incredibly, 
incredibly tragic. On top of that, that night, temperatures dropped around 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, meaning if Dennis was lost and wet in that forest, he could be in some serious danger. The elements were completely against him. Around 8.30 p.m., Dennis's grandfather ended up trekking six miles to the nearest ranger station to alert them that Dennis was missing. Remember, back in these days, people didn't have cell phones. They couldn't just call someone for help. He literally had to trek miles and miles in the elements to go find help. And eventually the National Guard would be called in along with the Green Berets. But due to the heavy rains and the fog, it was making the search absolutely impossible. The search was extremely affected by all of this. But as I said, this was the biggest search in National Park history. Nearly 1,400 people came to help search for Little Dennis. The Red Cross provided food for people. There were helicopters, canine units. And while searching, there were actually footprints found that led to a little stream. And this gave people some hope. The tracks indicated that one foot had been barefoot while the other was wearing an Oxford type shoe, the same type shoe that Dennis was wearing when he disappeared. However, it seems that these tracks were written off to be from a boy scout, one of the boy scouts helping in the search, yet the prints were not with the other prints. They kind of seemed to be off by themselves. Also, all the boy scouts were wearing their shoes. Why would one of the boy scouts take off one of their shoes? It was just odd. I also seen that a shoe and sock were found, but it was unclear if they matched Dennis, which you think that that would be a good thing to figure out. As Dennis's seventh birthday came and went, nearly 800 people were still searching. On June 22nd, 56 square miles have been searched by ground, and this continued until June 26th when the searches began to be cut back. And by June 29th, the searches would be ended. And still, there were absolutely no clues to where Dennis could have gone. However, this case went so far, it went nationwide to the point where the Martin family actually ended up sending a letter to Richard Nixon, who was president at the time, begging for federal help. They begged for the FBI to help, but the FBI would not step in because they said there was no evidence of foul play. And I think cases like this are really interesting to look at when it comes to search efforts. You think that all of these people coming in to help would have been a positive thing, but at the end of the day, there can be too many people helping to the point where it contaminates a crime scene, especially if they're untrained, which a vast majority of these people were. Yes, it can get more ground covered if this is in fact a case of a child wandering off, you might be able to find them faster if there's more people looking, but if this isn't a case of a child just wandering off, again, this crime scene could have been very contaminated, especially the fact where there were those footprints that led to a river and they kind of just got written off as one of the searchers where it could have been Dennis. Now, the only real sighting that could have had a chance to be connected to Dennis's disappearance was from a man named Harold Key, who had come out to say that he had been miles from Spence Field the day that Dennis went missing when he heard a sickening scream. He then reported seeing an unkempt stranger running through the woods. So could that scream have been from little Dennis? There was also a man who was harvesting illegal ginseng who claimed to have found the skeleton of a small child. And this was in and around Big Hollow Tremont. But it ends up this man didn't tell authorities until 1985 because he was scared of getting in trouble for illegally harvesting ginseng. And when authorities eventually went to look, they never found any skeletons. So it's unclear if this story is even true. Now this case has so many rumors and theories, it's actually kind of crazy. And they stem from everywhere from a serial killer to Bigfoot. But let's talk about three of the main theories. The first theory is a pretty straightforward one. It's that Dennis wandered off, he got lost and so come to the elements. Now you'd think if this did happen that his body would have been found somewhere, but his body has never been found, which is why it makes me really question this theory if it did happen. I can see it happening for sure, you know, a small child wandering off. It also makes me wonder why he would wander off when his family was right there and he was having fun with all these kids, why he would just wander off. But I mean, kids do wander, so it's not impossible. I just think it's strange that his body would never have been found, especially with so many people searching. The second theory is that Dennis was killed by a hungry bear or bobcat and was carried off. Now, usually with theories like this, I kind of go towards they're not possible because usually, you know, a bear or a bobcat or something would leave remains behind. You think you'd find blood, but considering how heavy of a rainfall happened, I could see the blood being washed away. If they carried the body far enough out of the area, maybe you wouldn't find it then. You know, there was the man that reported hearing a blood curdling scream. So it could have been little Dennis being you know, mauled to death. But you would think if this man heard this miles away, you'd think that the Martin family and the family friends would have heard the scream as well, but they never reported hearing a scream. Unless I guess Dennis wandered far enough away where this family couldn't hear it, but this guy did, I don't know. 
Now, the third theory is that Dennis was kidnapped. And the kidnapping theory has a few different theories that stem from it. The first is of the suspicious man. According to the FBI's records, many people, including the US Coast Guard and search and rescue, reported about a suspicious man involved in the searches. Now, this man's name has been redacted from the report, so we don't know who he is. However, author and investigator Michael Bouchard attempted to contact this man with no luck. The FBI said, and I quote, we discreetly established that this man had not been present at the park the day of the disappearance, end quote. So it kind of seems like this theory is scrapped, but I still see people bringing it up. Another branch of this theory would be that there was either a serial killer or a stranger abduction of some kind that happened. I've also seen theories about Dennis being kidnapped by cannibalistic feral forest people. As I said, there are some wild theories in this, but I don't think there's really much evidence to support anything because there's literally no evidence in this case. And that's the issue with this case. There's literally nothing to go off. It's as if Dennis vanished in the thin air, which we see in a lot of these national park cases. One second the person's there, the next second they're gone. Now the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children ended up doing an age progression photo of Dennis, you know, in case he was kidnapped and he's still out there somewhere to this day. If he is out there, hopefully an age progression photo could help him be identified because it has been so long that he obviously doesn't look like the same little six-year-old boy. Dennis would actually be 61 years old right now and this is what they'd expect him to look like. He had brown eyes and dark wavy brown hair and that's all we can really go off of because it's been so long he wouldn't look again at all like he did. And he was such a cute little kid, it makes me sad to wonder what did become of him. You know, was he murdered? Did he die cold and alone in that forest? Was he savagely eaten by feral people or a wild animal? I really hope it wasn't one of those, but I also hope it wasn't a serial killer. Honestly, none of the answers would be good. But this case leaves me with so many questions, which is why I like really diving into these missing persons cases. There are so many unanswered questions. I really like mysteries. It leads me to wonder like, why weren't leads like that shoe being found and that scream looked into more? Why was nothing ever found? You know, Dennis's shirt was never found. His remains were never found. You think that bright red shirt would be easy to spot. It's just all so strange. But what I do wanna know is what you all think of this case. I really enjoy covering some of these older cases. I think they have an even bigger realm of mystery compared to newer cases sometimes because there's usually more information. Unfortunately, Dennis's case doesn't have that much information because as I said, there's literally no evidence. It's what really sucks. And unfortunately, if there was evidence, it could have been washed away by the rainfall and all of those people walking and contaminating the crime scene. And at this point, it's been so long that I don't know if we'll ever know what happened to little Dennis. But again, I really wanna know how you feel about this case. Where do you kind of sway with it? And with that, if you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It allows me to continue to create content like this and spread the word on stories like this. And as always, I hope you all stay safe out there, lock your windows and doors, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.